Hey everybody, it's me again, and this is my last Valentine series episode. I mentioned in my last episode, the one where I shared my room, I also chatted about my new upcoming series. So this one, this last episode is going to be leading into that new series. Um, and as you can see, I used my Graphic 45 um, Gilded Lily paper collection. I... Um, don't think I even used this one. I may have. I might have used the scraps, um, the 8x8, but um, I think I used some of these cards, but I also am showing some in there. And I used some of the um, cutouts, which are tags and pockets that comes with this collection. So I didn't use it all. I just used some, and then the rest I shared in there. So um, like I was saying, I shared with you a stack load of things that I wanted to either use or lose so the majority I used and I'm going to share with you what I did with everything I did make a loaded um, pocket and I was able to use graphic 45 gilded lily and then some other goodies from here and there so I'm gonna leave this here for now so I can kind of show you what I used um, I did make a few layered butterflies. Now, after I share you this part, then the video is going to continue on into the start to finish of three of the items that are in this. I'm going to show you how I do the wand and some more shakers and then also some uh, cutout shapes that I just turned into like embellishments. Um, but I didn't, I didn't share everything. So I did make layered butterflies using my Martha Stewart butterfly here this punch it's a heavy punch I got that on clearance um, at Hobby Lobby and then this what, is, what brand is this this is a recollections brand butterfly so I used that and all the paper the majority of it I think all the paper that I use in this is this collection um, I did use uh, some of this table scatter from Joann's and this is one this is the tag that goes on top so this is just thin paper that's shaped into heart so I used this I had gotten it on clearance um, I'm sharing some of these tags I didn't actually use any but these tags here that are also from Joann's that were on clearance I did alter one of these banners from Michaels and I'm sharing a couple and then the, um, the shape tags that come from Michaels as well they're usually in the baking section I just shared some instead of actually use them usually I just share those I did use some of these um, rosettes from Hobby Lobby I used two those are Paper Studio from Hobby Lobby. I used a couple of stickers from Recollection. This is like that French theme. I did use a couple, one or two of these from that I found at um, Joanne's also on clearance. So I think I just used the crown. I don't know what else. Might have used the flower. And I did finish this pack here, which was a big rosette. And you'll see me using this in the first part of the start to finish. And company, I found this on clearance at Joann's. I never got to use these, so these are going back in my stash. I'm not ready to part with those yet. Um, these doilies, whoops, I only use this one here, but they are from Natasha Scrapbook Corner. She does sell some really pretty paper doilies and some other things. And during my start to finish, you'll see me using some other elements from her shop. I use one of the bows from Joann's. Whoops, sorry, I made a big paper clip out of them. It does have like foam in there to keep the bows from going flat and I actually left them in. I use one of the banners. Um, this one here that looks like that. I was going to use this one but I ended up not so. And that's from Can Company. Also I found it at Joann's. In here was a little uh, crown applique think I got that at Walmart it's one of those iron-on appliques I will be using this in the packaging you might not see that I don't know and again 
I thought I was going to use these big tassel, uh, this tassel kit, but I think I'm going to use one of each. This is from Walmart. I think I'm going to use these with my packaging. So, um, all right. So aside from that, that was the items that I had showed you in the video. I'm going to try to get all this back in. I used some trim. This I find at Miami Warehouse, and it looks like that. And Tuesday morning they had some spools a while back, and some of them were like this, so I did use a little bit of that. This I get from uh, Wild Orchid Craft, and that's literally all I have left, so I need to get some more. But I usually like to wait until they have a sale, and when I need more like flowers and stuff. That's like one of my favorite trims. I used a little bit of this um, trim from Hobby Lobby. It's kind of a flat pearl trim, but it's not flat back. I mean, really a little bit of that on the butterflies. And then just a tiny piece of this trim also from Hobby Lobby. And it's a stretchy trim. I always get these for 50% off, so this is a stretchy trim. And what else? Let's see. I think everything else. I used most of the tool. Actually, I used all the tool that were wrapped around the items that I've been receiving from uh, my swaps and from the challenge giveaway that I have going on. Plus, I did use a little bit of this one here. I think I got this at Walmart and some straws from here and there and what else I think that's all I have to share with you right now oh I did let me here let me show you this one too I did use the diamond dust this time to sugar up some items I like to say sugar up it just that's what I feel like I'm doing when I'm putting that stuff okay so let me show you this and once I've showed you everything then if you want to see how I did a few of the items then just stick around So there it is. <laughs> so I have a different angle so you can kind of see it in its entirety, sort of. That's as far as I can take my camera. Um, and then let me just kind of rotate this and show you the back. Isn't it pretty? It is Valentine slash Marie Antoinette. Yes. I know the person that this is going to likes Marie Antoinette and I wanted to use that paper and now this stuff still keeps coming off um, you know you try to shake as much as you can but there's still going to be loose diamond dust everywhere okay so let's start with this um, the loaded pocket I did the same way I've done before and I do have a video in the series how I make one of these the only difference between this one and the one in the series is this is wider and I think it's the same height so I mean that's the only difference it's wider this way about an inch I did dangle on here a charm I made let's see I don't know if I want to zoom in or not. I'm not going to take off the charm, but I previously made this um, sometime last year. And more for planner charms, you know, as a planner dangle actually. So it's a long chain, but whoever gets this can shorten the chain or take it apart, use it however they want. And I already had this made, so and I thought it kind of matched the whole thing. I don't like how this looks so... Mm. All right, so let's just continue here. I keep getting distracted. We're just gonna start pulling stuff out. So I just threw in this really pretty ornament that I got from Michaels. I thought it went well. And I put it this way up. For some reason I like this end more than this end, just for looks. And I share with you how I make this, but I don't share how I frosted it up and sugared it up. And I also had added at the end a couple of the paper hearts from Joann's. There's two goodie bags from Joann's. And I'm not going to share what's inside, but I did make... This is pretty, isn't it? This is Paris. I did make a paper clip. There's the rosette, and I took... I added one of the paper hearts. 
and a heart shaped um, half back pearl so this happy came off of this and I just replaced it and this pearl is from Natasha scrapbook corner so here's my other one some more goodies in here and here's the jumbo paperclip and there's that um, bow from Joann's and I put this on there and I think I got that at Hobby Lobby and then I finished the back with this piece here which I think is also from Natasha Scrapper Corner so that and a uh, Walmart heart shaped pick and I show you how I make this piece here and I don't show you that I just glued on this craft stick from Walmart I did gesso it too after the fact and here's the shakers that I shared I didn't do anything different to those so you'll be seeing those here is the pencil this is a Anna Smith is that how you say Anna Smith yeah pencil that came in a pack that I found at Tuesday morning and I here's the butterfly that I made and it's on that elastic so it will come off or just slide down if you want to you know erase something if you're gonna use the pen so it's layered and it's sugared up and I did um, do the edges with the gold marker so here are the wands I made I don't show how I make these, but it's pretty much the same thing as what I'm about to share with you. This I made in one of the series episodes, and this is a Hobby Lobby one. Looks like this normally, and then I just did that to it. Alright, so then the big one, which you'll be seeing me create, is right here. I didn't do anything different to it through, from what you see in the video. Here's another goodie bag. I got these bags from Hobby Lobby and then I made another paper clip with some tulle and then some half back pearls on both sides. So this is the blue tulle from Walmart. Inside are some items that I made a while back. Some of the bows um, using a Sizzix die. And I made this last year sometime so um, I just threw those in. They're ready to use. And the what I use for this is those rolls, the, the fake leather rolls from Hobby Lobby. Let me go to the back real quick and share with you. Uh, here is this and I'm hiding um, what's written there so the person doesn't see who she is. <laughs> but here's how I use the banners. I did cut down the pink one smaller so that it looks layered. And here are those stickers and a binder clip from Michaels. Here's the other goodie bag, same one like this, but altered a little bit with the paper. And I folded it over. You could just open it there, and I um, decorated it a little bit. And there is the close pin that I altered with the paper and some pieces. This is from Wild Orchid Craft. Okay, so then here's the rest of the back of that, and here's that banner. Here's one of the pockets. I didn't fill the um, cards that are in there. I left them blank. I layered two of those paper hearts. And here's my pocket. This is one of the cards from the pack. Alright, so back to... As you can see how all this stuff is just still sliding off. So here's my front pocket. I used the paper line to create that and I outlined it in the gold again. Made a pretty arrangement with assorted flowers from Michaels and Wild Orchid Craft and my stash. There was another image under there but I can't remember what it was and I just put a heart again. I wanted to add a few more hearts to make it more Valentine-ish. Here's another one of those butterflies. And then now you can see the beautiful opening which reminds me of uh, Marie Antoinette's dress. It's always so opulent. It always has a lot of, you know, frilly stuff. So this is actually trimmed from Hobby Lobby and I used the whole thing. Whatever I had left over, um, it comes with that rhinestone in the middle already. So I literally, you know, after I had cut this open to make my foldovers, I just put the trim, ran it from the back and went forward, made that turn down, made this turn, went up and went back again. And then whatever I had left, 
I just put it on the back. And this paper is double sided so you can see it. I didn't have to double up my paper. And then here's a piece that someone gave me. It was, I think, like a clip earring to finish off that part. See, everything is finished inside. And then I did the accordion fold with scraps of paper. And there you go. And then here's where I hung my charm tassel thing. All right, so if you want to see how I did the... Where you go? i show you how I put this together and how I do this. And the last thing I show you is how I made this and then the Eiffel Tower without the stick. So just the Eiffel Tower part. So just stay tuned and that's what's going to be next. And again, thank you all for um, joining in. I'll see you guys next time. and there's the punch that's a Martha Stewart border punch and I grabbed the paper now I'm not going to be sharing every single sheet that I use in these projects you know the names but it's from the same line the gilded lily and I'm going to be using that medallion for part of my wand and I'll be showing you how I you know I look at it again to see how big it is so rosette I would think was Four inches so it would take about a two inch uh, strip and it would turn into four inches so here I'm gonna decide okay how wide do I need my strips to make a bigger rosette to go behind that and right there I'm measuring it's four inches um, so I need a six inch so I do three inch width strips two of them I'm going to stick together to make a large rosette to fit behind that. I hope you didn't hear my stomach growling. <laughs> it's super early in the morning right now. So I'm going to just punch my edge of the strips. I, you know, I'm not the best at doing borders where all everything lines up. You know, where you have to keep going down the line. I wish they made border punches that were longer so you didn't have to do it so many times. Alright, so I did them already and I'm going to score at every half inch. And you just got to carefully do that when you get to the end where the scallop is so you don't rip the, um, the fancy edge. So I do that to both. And again, it's every half inch for that.
and you don't have to use a two and a quarter but that's what I pulled out you could use a two inch or even an inch and a half that's gonna be the part that I um, use to hold my rosette you know once you fold everything so you gotta take in mind when you fold this that one piece you fold in one direction meaning like the flap on the outside is gonna go either up or down and when you do the second piece you're gonna go in the other direction so if you do one where the flap starts on the top fold it up then the other one you have to make sure you have it fold it down as you can see they're gonna nest within each other and that way you don't see your seams once everything is put together so I stick the two together with my wet glue adhesive and you just make sure it's all pressed in it's cardstock so it's a little thick and you're gonna glue the other end together again they nest together on top of each other I do have my glue gun on on the side <clears throat> So now I'm just going to put those little circles that I cut on there. See how easily that just goes down. And I just made sure that it was bigger than my other piece. Glue that down to hold that in place. And then you also want to do the back. Again, they don't have to be that big. But I know that it's going to get covered up anyway. It's just to hold everything in place. And right there is like, you know, an imperfect wimp, but that's going to get covered with the straw, so I never worry about that. It's just a gold straw that I got from Hobby Lobby. Alright, so there's my Kane Company embellishment that I'm going to use now. That was sold in Joann's a while ago could have been over a year ago because when I got them they were already on clearance those doilies there paper doilies are from Natasha scrapbook corner I will post the link down below on the one in the front I just use hot glue to place it but when I put the one on the back I use a wet glue now I'm just kind of tacking the edges down so it's not too loose All right, so now I'm just making sure it all looks good. It does have a sticky foam on the back, but I always add extra glue. Make sure it doesn't pop off. And even though that looks pretty as it is, you know, I have to take it further. So there's my paper. That's a scrap that I had in there, and I'm going to cut out that image I pointed out. First, I'm going to put my back doily. I wanted to sign the back and use my stamps from Target that says handmade or made by. Um, got those around fall last year. The only thing is that that ink was really super wet, and um, it wasn't completely dry when I you know, kept on working with it. It smeared a little bit. And it, um, since the doilies is kind of really thin, it kind of bled a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. Then I just signed it and put the year. I'm just checking out my pen. Those gel pens that I use a lot is from Dollar Tree. I do love them, but you do have to kind of test them before you start writing with them each time. I did regret using the wet glue because that did not help the ink to dry. I should have used a um, my glue tape runner. I mean my tape runner. So just a suggestion if you try this. And then I tacked down the edges again with the hot glue. If you hear me slurping something, it's just my coffee. And I have to do a lot of this work now, um, my projects and recordings early in the morning on my days off because hubby has been around more often. 
because of his work schedule, he's either early or he's off, so I don't get too many days um, alone. So I'm going to fussy cut out this image. And I'm just checking that it's not too big where it's going to cover up everything. Those scissors, um, I think they're little bee scissors, I'm not sure. But I did get them at Tuesday morning and they're nice precision scissors and they are like the non-stick kind. So I use those when I do my planner and, and cutting like tapes and stuff. And also for fussy cutting because they're so fine. Okay, so I'm double checking. I pull this off and it came right off easily and I save it. I end up using it on this project and the other half on another project. So now, because this is called Gilded Lily, I thought it would be a good idea to use my paint marker again. I find that at Walmart. And I just edge. Finally, I don't do a very thick edge. You can see right there with that. And I use that marker in several other projects. Instead of using in, um, the Distress Inks, I thought it'd be cool to do that. It makes it look like it's gilded. So here I pull that gem off. I end up using it later. Cut this in half with my Tim Holtz scissors because those are also non-stick and that does have a foam st um, sticker on the back. So I decide I'm just going to use half on the top. I thought I was going to use both pieces. <laughs> kind of gives it a crown look. So I take that and put it aside. So I'm going to bake a bow in my, um, what's that, a bow dabber I found at Walmart. I love that thing, and I don't need a bigger bow maker because this is just right for me, and it doesn't take up space. I think it's about 7 to $9 for that. Now I'm using the tool that I have been receiving on packages from all my swaps and my the entries to my challenge instead of pulling out my spools. I just been using that so I pretty much used most of what was given to me for most of my projects I'm gonna make a really nice fluffy bow out of this I want it to look extravagant and extreme and you're gonna see me um, once I'm done trimming everything I'm going to fluff my bow and just like open up all the little folds there instead of just leaving it the way it was and you're going to see how fluffy it looks. I'm deciding do I want the image on top or underneath. I decide to go with underneath so I'm just going to glue that piece down now. I'm going to glue my bow down and you'll see that I like press it down a lot because it's so airy. Um, I want the glue to hold everything. So I just press it and push down and let the glue kind of seep through all that tool. All right, so then I decided, oh, well, I could put that little gem right there. <laughs> so I don't have to throw it away or save it for another day. I hate saving things. I don't know why. You know, things like that, that you've pulled off or cut. Um, I think that gem right there, that heart-shaped bling, is from Natasha Scrapbook Corner as well. <laughs> Wanted to add some hearts. This is a Valentine's gift that I'm gifting, so I wanted to put a few hearts in my projects. And that should be a done deal on that wand. Now we're going to do the shaker or shakers. There's going to be a couple of shakers here. And I'm using the cutouts and those binder pockets from Target. They're going to be simple shakers. I'm going to have my fuse tool. 
and this time the fuse tool wasn't super hot like last time where it was just melting through so I didn't have too much trouble there I want to leave a little bit of space because I want to fill up my shaker with a lot of stuff so I don't go you know close to the edge of that card and I did double side or double up that cutout there's that fuse tool I got it from Hobby Lobby so I did double up my card so it's you know double sided I just glued them two together actually I just used my glue tape or I keep saying that tape runner <laughs> all right so now I'm gonna trim off the excess that I don't need oh I'm gonna test this out and make sure that there's no like right there there was a hole so I thought I would just make sure first one, because last time I was having issues, I want to make sure this time it's sealed right. And I'm going to trim my excess. And I do save those pieces that I cut off because I could always make tiny shakers. So now I'm just going to fill it with all the um, sequins that I want. And these do get really full. I put a lot of stuff in these particular pockets. A lot of the sequence like that was given to me by some crafty friends. <laughs> and that little spoon is really handy now. I'm really liking using that. I picked up a package of those from the Dollar Tree where they have their party supplies. So just a really nice assortment of sequins and then I'm going to break out these like gemstone looking things there. I think they're called table scatter that I found at Party Supermarket or Party City. Got them in four colors but they have more colors. So they look like little diamonds just in colors and they're just little plastic things and they're tiny enough to do shakers with. And that's another reason why when I was putting in my card and fusing it, I wanted to make sure there was enough space for those thick pieces. So I'm trying to push it down and I'm going to finish sealing this. And that I knew was sealed because it went straight through to the cardboard. Okay, so now trim the excess. I'm going to be putting some trim on top of that, but I wanted to make sure everything was nice and clean. Shaking it all up so it's all mixed up. And I just love that mix. <laughs> and that card says if the crown fits. So that trim I found um, at the Miami warehouse. I'm just going to glue it down. And I decide to not trim each side and I just kind of fold it and bend it to go around those corners. It was pretty bendable. Alright, so that trim is down. It looks pretty. And now I'm just going to go ahead and make a tool bow with the rest of the tool. That's more of a pale, pale, peachy colored um, tool that was on another package. So I just handmade that bow with two loops, fluffed it up. And I decide to glue it there. I was going to put it in the corner, but I just put it there. And then I finish it off with a centerpiece, which right now I can't think what it was. I had a little bag of things. Um, I think I went, yeah, I went with that little, someone gave me that piece. And I'm pressing it down really hard so that it goes through all the tool like I did before. And it 
so cute so now the next one just wanted to finish that one off with another bow with another piece of tool from packaging and I just make a single looped um, bow for that one I fluff it up me forever to fluff that one up I don't know why <laughs> I'm just trying to make them look even okay same thing just glued it down and then this one I do put a crown I have no idea where I got that crown from I want to say Hobby Lobby And again, press it down really good. Okay, shakers are done. And then the next one will be a couple of, um, I guess they could be like embellishments. So here are the two dies that I use to make these embellishments, the fan or Nate. And that's a Sizzix die. And the um, Fleur de Lis and Eiffel Tower, also a Sizzix die. That's a Tim Holtz Alterations die right there. I only use the Eiffel Tower in this. So I, I cut some paper. And I'm going to use the chipboard that Irene sent me, Crafty Irena. Thank you so much for that. I'm already using it and I'm just going to glue my papers down um, before cutting out everything. I could trim it before I do the back side. Just making sure which side I want to show off. And then I'm also going to prep the one for the Eiffel, Eiffel Tower while the first one dries. Couldn't decide what paper I wanted, but I really did want to keep using that floral one. And I'm having a snack candy cane left over from Christmas. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to run this through my big shot. Just takes one turn and it's done. It cuts straight through perfectly. See, so it's already papered on both sides. So here, I'm going to use my marker again to edge both pieces. It's deco color. I think it's um, by Marvy. Or no, I don't know what the. It's deco color. I know that much. Premium gold paint marker. So I do the very, you know, the edge, edge, and then I go in a little bit. I don't go too thick so that you see a little bit on the um, paper. And I do both sides back and front. I just love that marker. And I haven't even touched the silver one yet. I have to break that one out. I did buy a silver. So I have this tassel that someone gave me. And I'm just going to glue it on there. 
but I'm going to pull out a few items that I've been using in my series. So those are from Martha Stewart, and then the thick cards I think are from Michael's. Table Scatter I think is from Walmart. You know, just from different places, but I've been using those. That's a Michael's flower. And then I think the rest of the flowers are Wild Orchid Crafts, and just from here and there. And that's from Michael's. This is Happy Valentine's Day. It's written in red but you really can't tell once everything is done I'm just pulling out things deciding you know what I want to use <laughs> but I did want something in this whole pocket letter project um, not pocket letter loaded pocket something to say happy Valentine's only because this is a Valentine's gift just in the Marie Antoinette theme so I'm going to put a little bit of lace on the edge to make it pretty. And I'm gluing it to the back side. And the funny thing is I didn't use that much lace and trims on this project. I wanted to, it to be more just paper. So there's that other half that I showed you, and that Martha Stewart chipboard is a sticker. I end up gluing the wrong side of that, so I take off the glue and, you know, do the front. And just, you know, make it kind of look like a crowned heart. I'm just going to layer my hearts and flowers. And I don't show it in this video, but you saw it already in the beginning that I do gesso everything and I use my, um, what's it called? Diamond dust to make everything even prettier and more shabby. <laughs> and here, I forgot to run my marker on the edge of that banner. I end up doing it later, carefully. <laughs> And I can't stop adding flowers. That's where I realize in there I go trying to fix it. And then I um, end up gluing that a little bit more and then put a little half back pearl back there. And I think, um, yeah, I'm going to end up trimming a little bit. Just wanted it a little bit shorter, but it does make a fuzzy mess. <laughs> so we're pretty much um, done, I believe. Oh no, I'm sorry, I'm going to do the Eiffel Tower. I'm just going to glue uh, a bow down and then a center. So I'm just going to go ahead and start saying my goodbyes. Um, I want to thank you all for watching my series. This is the last one and it's leading into my new series, which is um, Use It or Lose It. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time in my next series. Bye now.